you guys get the privilege of hearing me two times in a row. I'm sorry, but I'm talking now and then I'm going to talk a bunch in just a little bit in our service. So, um, so glad to be here. I love team. I love working together on a team. I wouldn't do ministry alone. If God asked me to, like put me on an island by myself or something, like there was just like one family, and I suppose I would do that. But I prefer that there's an option not to, and so I take that. Um, and I just love working with people. And it's the most fun part of our job, and it's the most draining part, and it's hard. And it's hard to find people. <laughs> and um, it's hard because I've never, ever heard a kids leader say, I have too many people. <laughs> and I've, ne- I've, never, I've never heard someone say, I have enough people either. Now, I have seen some people who um, there might be reasons that they're not really prepared to take people on their team, but that's really a whole other issue. But the fact is we're just all in the same boat, right? We all need people to serve on our team. Every single one of us needs that. And I've served with so many different people and they reach a point where they get discouraged at some point. And if you're like my ministry has been, then you have seasons where you're like, oh, I feel so good. Like we have five new people that just joined the team. I feel like a total rock star in leadership. And then like a month goes by and you're like, I quit. I'm done. I, I, I stink. I, I'm a bad leader. I can't get people. And so... What I want to talk to you a little bit today is not so much recruiting strategies necessarily, although we could hit on that a little bit, Um, but I want to talk a little bit about certain people on our team that are, they're already serving and how can we raise them, the ones that we do have, not necessarily the ones that we're looking for, although there's people there too, but the ones that we do have on our team into maybe higher level leadership levels, because I think one of the answers to, I feel pretty stressed out and like I don't have enough people on my team, I think one of the answers is you do, but they're just not doing as much as they probably could do. And so we're gonna talk about that a little bit today. With that being said, I guess I will pass this out. So there you go, go ahead and just take one down, pass it around. Don't finish that. (laughs) Before we get going, let's go ahead and pray. And then um, I just want to pray that God would encourage you, us, and then that also maybe even if one idea sticks, right? Because it's like a fire hose at anything like this. If even one idea sticks and you go home with to be encouraged and execute, that that would happen. So Jesus, thank you that we get to be your, on your team and we get to lead. Um, we're privileged and it's humbling and exciting and sometimes it's terrifying because we 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 get to a weekend and somebody's called in and <laughs> what weekend does that not happen and um, and we you know the feeling because you're so close to us you know how we feel and you know what we experience and so what I pray because you are the one that calls people you are the one that prepares hearts that you would give us your eyes and your heart for people the ones that you're preparing even right now that you would give us wisdom to speak into their life um, God, and uh, we just thank you for what we know you're going to do. And we're, we're open to hear your voice. We just prepare our hearts for that. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, if you're familiar with the NFL at all, they have what's called a practice squad. So at the beginning of the season, they have like preseason, right? And they have like a bunch of extra players on NFL teams. So the Seahawks will have a bunch of their regular roster, plus all these other players that either have been invited or they've drafted or whatever. And they start whittling away as the regular season comes and they start cutting their roster down to a 53-man roster. Well, they're allowed to keep 10 people on their practice squad. So there's a, a, a group of guys that all they do is practice. And the reason they're able to do that or they choose to do that is because um, they can develop them at a low cost. And they and so these people will practice all year long. Now. The, uh, in, so any point during the season, they can actually bring these people onto their team. And there's a bunch of different rules that don't apply to us at all. But uh, they can bring them onto their team or another team can sign that, that person off of their practice squad. But pretty much they, they're not of any value to the game day except for what they do during practice. So they have a minimal role. What some people might say is a really big role because they might prepare them for the, the coming up person. But they don't affect game day as much as the people on the roster actually do affect their game day. Um, We have people on our team who are minimally engaged, and you can just start thinking of people right now or serving. Like, they're the people who they serve once a month, and not just like a checklist because their heart is bad, oh, I serve, so I check it off, but they're just doing what you've asked them to do, and they serve every once in a while. Maybe there's someone whose kids are are attending your church and you made that rule or whatever. but we have, we, we have these people on our team who they're serving a little bit, 
But if we were really to go through and think about it, it'd be like, you know what? I wonder if they could do even more than what they're doing. Because our ultimate goal is to add them to our roster. The goal is to add people who are in on our practice squad, on our team, who are not doing a ton. We want to add them to the roster. We want to give them a bigger role because we have that need. We all have, we all have a need for more of whatever people are willing to give. The question is, how do we add them? I'm going to talk about, I want to talk about a few ways, but not all the ways. I think that's one of the funny parts, like it's like a pressure in a workshop, is that like you feel like I'm going to give, these are the ways to do it. <laughs> that's not possible. Like, and there's so many more than I can even think of. So I would say here, we're going to talk about a few ways. I only wrote three down, but a few of the ways to add people to your roster, to your team, to call them to more. And then I would ask for you to ask the Holy Spirit, and we'll leave a moment in here too, to bring that to your, uh, the fourth way, whatever that is, fourth, fifth, sixth way, to your mind. Um, The first way to add people to your roster is this. Know what you're inviting them to be a part of. Know what you're inviting them to be a part of. Many leaders want, uh, they want their people to step up into a higher level of leadership but so many can't articulate what it is exactly they're asking them to do. Will you join the kids team? No, because I have no clue what that means. Um, I've seen it and it's like, you're just in a big room with a bunch of kids running around and you're like, well, that's not my vision at all. That's not my heart. That's offensive to me. It's like, well, you haven't shared what you actually want me to do. So I don't know, you know? So know what you're asking someone to do. Imagine how frustrating it would be if your leader came to you and they said, hey, I, I wish you would do more. And then you're like, well, okay, what exactly would you want me to do more then? And they're like, well, I don't really know. Just do more. <laughs> do more. Do more. Just do good. So you have people on your team who are like, they're, I'm willing to come and, and, and be with the kids and sit in a, a kid's church or hold babies. Or I'm, I'm doing what you've asked me to do, but I don't know even what there is more. Nobody's ever explained anything to me that there even is an extra level of organization. And you're like, there is, there is. But sometimes we don't. Sometimes we haven't even articulated that to them. Sometimes we literally don't even know what we would want. And I like to say that whenever I'm talking to anybody about building teams, is I, I like to say, well, start by writing out what you would like to see. Like, what's your dream for your ideal team? Write it out on paper. Um, make, make a pipeline of what that would look like. It's so many leaders have never actually really done that. There's no structure, first of all, and then there's no job description. So you can't really ask them, hey, what I would love for you to do this, and this is what that looks like. Because that's oftentimes, for, especially for a high capacity leader, that's gonna be their next question. What exactly do I do? And many people, like, they want the details, right? And that's not even a strength of mine. So I've really had to develop that. I'm like, just love kids, man. Just love kids and no kids. They're like, yeah, that sounds scary because I don't know what to do. How, how do I do that? And so know what you're asking them to do. And that is going to be such a huge win when you present them with a question. Hey, I would love for you to do more. I, w- I would love for you to step up in leadership. That's such a big concept. Okay, what? How? You got to know. You got to be able to cast vision in order for them to have a vision. You got to have a picture in your mind of what it is that they're going to do before they can, they're ever going to have that picture. So first thing I say, write out what you'd like your kid men roster to look like. What positions do you need in order to make that happen? What are the job descriptions? Now there's flexure within structure, right? Because not everybody's made so differently. So somebody's role might even look a little bit different. But at least have an idea for them going into it. I think one of the things I like to do, one of my strategies when I ask someone, um, I will ask them to join the team, come in, take a look at what we're doing. I'll use elementary as an example. Why don't you come in and just sit in a gathering? They come in and they sit. Okay, would you like to be a part of what we're doing? You know, fill out the background check, all that type of stuff. Okay, yes. Awesome. Now they've been in for a couple times. And you start to pray and think and like you get to know them. And then you say... I think you'd be good at this. If you go to someone and you say those words, I think, I've been thinking about you. I think you'd be good at this. That for people is like, it's like a springboard for them. They're excited. Now, some people are like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll think about that. But most people get excited when you're thinking about them. <laughs> That's just the truth. Oh, good. You're not, I'm not just a warm body in this room. You think I'd be good at that? Now, I'll be the first one to admit I've missed a couple times. But man, you hit more often than not, at least you're doing something, you know? 
say, like, I think you'd be really good at this. You know, another thing that I'll do sometimes, I think this is really, it's like, it's, you just, you're putting the bait out, is you say, I have something I want to talk to you about. I think you'd be good at it, but let's talk about it later. It's, it gets their minds like going, oh, oh man, that's so cool. And that's fun to do. I had one guy that I did that with a few times because I just didn't have a chance to sit down with them. Finally, he came to me. He's like, we have to schedule a time. You've been telling me this thing that you want to talk to me about. What is it? And it was just exciting because it started to develop a little something in him, put, put me on his radar, put kids ministry on his radar. And obviously, that, of course, has to do with kids ministry, what I'm involved in, of course. And, um, but, but tell people that you have something in mind specifically for them. Know what it is that you're asking them to do. I think sometimes it's, it's um, intimidating, too, to ask for... We have a lot of high-level leaders here, but it's intimidating at times to ask for people to be a part of what we're doing because we don't feel like we have, any, we're, have it under control, right? It's like, I, I'm not very structured. Well, I would just say, then, you're not supposed to do it by yourself, and if the reason you can't get people on your team is because you're not structured, the mission just demands you to, be, to do it. The mission demands you to be a little more organized then. That's okay. Because it's not, like I said, for me, even personally, that's not a huge strength of mine is like systems and all that kind of stuff. But through systems, relationship will thrive. And so, and vice versa, I suppose, right? Don't tweet that. Uh, Second thing is this. And I think something that we're so hesitant, and oftentimes kids kids leaders especially can be so hesitant to do this, um, because our hearts are so we know what it's like to do a lot we know what it's like to be in the trenches and to be i don't like the word burnout but if anybody could experience it you know you're like okay don't get burnout make sure you're in a gathering make sure you're hearing the mission and the vision of the church have you spent any time with your leader are you being you know poured into Uh, but sometimes we swim the pendulum so far away that we don't second one is this ask for more ask for more don't be afraid to ask people to do the work of the kingdom. Because really, I think we've made far too much of the word burnout. People now can even use it as an excuse not to serve at all in church. Isn't it true? It's sad. Man, I just don't want to get burnt out. I'm like, ooh, I hope that I'm doing a good enough job that you, well, one, <laughs> it's usually on you. That's, that's hard to say, and it's kind of harsh, you know? I've had to have that conversation with people, though. It's like, I don't really, I don't know if what you've experienced is burnout necessarily. It's probably just like a stewardship issue that we should take a look at, right? But beyond that, um, it's like, I think I'm going to do a pretty good job of taking care of you. So I don't think you're going to get burnt out by being a part of what we're doing. And most people, they're not going to get burnt out. That's why we're asking more people. (laughs) That's why we're asking more of you in the first place. Some of you are like, dude, I'm burnt out. I'm exhausted. And that's what I'm saying. That's why we're talking right now. It's because we need to ask for more from other people. If you're exhausted, and you're like to the point of feeling like, I just, you know what, the answer is probably there is someone. You're not the only one that God's called to do this. There's someone there for you to go, hey, I, I, need, I need more from you. Here's what I'm thinking. Here's what I'm doing. And encourage them to be a part. I love this line. I've, I've heard it. One of my mentors said it a lot. It says, Jesus lowers the bar of acceptance, but he raises the bar of commitment. We shouldn't be afraid to ask for people to commit. He asks for it, for it all, and we're so willing to give it. Many of us don't even get paid at our, the church that we're at, and we're willing to give it, and we've maybe done it for years. There's more people who the Holy Spirit could speak to about doing that as well. You know, raise the bar. Here's what I, also we, we find to be true, is that people are just waiting to be asked The number one reason people don't go to church is because nobody asks them to go to church. The number one reason people don't get plugged in is because no one's asked them. And I'm talking about like a personal ask, really. Not like, um, hey, here's a sheet of paper that we've printed out. And although we can talk about that in a minute because those are awesome too. But but here's here's a piece of paper. We need everybody involved. Here's a piece of paper. Oh, wow. They really need me. No, so they need someone. They don't need me. They just need someone. I'm not excited because someone needs someone. I'm excited when someone talks to me about it. So ask personally. And, and, and some, um, some churches, maybe if you're, if you're at a larger church too, it's hard to get that personal ask. I totally understand that. And in a few minutes, I want to even bounce some ideas around, at, regardless of the size of the church you're at, of how you have gotten to the point to ask people. 
to do more. But when there's someone that's just sitting there and they've been in the same level of doing the same thing over and over again, I'll just maybe use an example, like they've been leading a small group. I've seen this before. It's like, well, then that's all I've really asked them to do, but they really have, they want to lead. They want to lead a group of leaders. And I just didn't know that, but, I, but I've never talked to them about it too. The, the other thing that we risk is that they'll, they'll go, eh, I'm kind of getting, I'm not being used as much as I want. They're waiting to be asked to do more. They're waiting to be asked. Just like a person to get involved is waiting to be asked, so is a person who is involved who has the potential to do more. Sometimes too, and I think every one of us has maybe experienced this before where, and it's not always our fault, but it's always feels so bad. And we take it personal. Does anybody else take it personal when someone leaves their team? <laughs> I do. Anybody raise their hand? Yeah. <laughs> I do. I'm like, you don't believe in what we're doing? You don't believe in me. You don't like me. I don't like you. You know, that's how it feels. It's like, well, how could you possibly leave this team? Jesus loves children. You don't love Jesus. <laughs> you know, but... But sometimes it's because sometimes, I say sometimes because it wouldn't be fair to say all the time, sometimes it's because we, we didn't steward that person's gifts and talents and we didn't ask for them to do more. And they're just like, I, I have more to give. And, if, and, and it, it's not that they're like, oh, this isn't good enough. They're, just, they're more or less saying, well, I'm just, um, this doesn't seem, you could probably find somebody else to do what I'm doing. And you're like, are you kidding me? I haven't asked you to do more because you're so stinking awesome, I don't want to lose you. And they're like, it's the exact opposite yeah. of that. Yeah. Isn't that funny? That's just true. Um, the third part is this. And then, I'm, and then I want to talk, I want us to collaborate a little bit here. Um, but trust the general manager. I, like, we talk about the first, we can talk about all these, like, ideas to get people onto our team, and, um, like, we can brainstorm, and, and if you do this and that, and appreciate them, and, the, and, and all of those things, and those are practical, and then we think the other thing's not practical, the praying part about it, which he says, pray to the Lord of the harvest, because he's the one who's in charge, he'll bring workers into his fields, so I, for me, it's trusting to go, God, this is a season that you've put me in, and I trust you to know. Because zoom, if you could just zoom out a little bit, you, you could say to yourself, wow, it's really cool. God's, you know, God's the one who's put you into this position, right? He's the one who put you into this position, but you feel all this weight and responsibility, and you feel like a complete failure if you don't have t every single room filled for the next year, right? And, but, but really, if you were to be able to just encourage yourself <laughs> for a minute, you would go, you're, you're doing a good job. You're really trying hard. Your heart is in the right place. And of course, you should be trying to figure out new strategies. But it's like, you also need to trust and make sure that you're talking to God about this. I have seen so much, and I've been so frustrated for people. Um, and I would say, this is true for like all kids leaders, elementary included. Um, and it, but especially if you oversee early childhood, that's where it's super duper hard. And it, cause it, you can almost get like bitter. You're just like, man, like I just, I'm like lost my faith in people because they're just not showing up. And then, and then, and then you, and then you start to like get like, it's like, God, like, am I even supposed to be doing this? Like, why do you have me here? I'm just, I'm just ticked. I'm frustrated all the time. I, I'm not enjoying people anymore. And, um, and we start to lose our trust that he has put us in the position he's put us in for the time that he's put us there. And again, I'll go back to the beginning. I've never met a person who says they have enough people on their team, ever. Um, I say the general manager because in the NFL, there's a person who's at the GM of the team, the general manager. And what he does is he hires and fires players, essentially. And then you have the coach who leads the team. In this scenario, we're the coach and God's the general manager. Go to God first. Go to God first. When you're in a season, this is the spiritual part, right? When you're in a season where you feel like you don't have enough people, go to him first. Start asking him to reveal. It's, this is spirit, a spiritual principle that has practical applications. Go to him first and ask him, God, will you begin to just prepare hearts and reveal people who my team can ask, who I can ask to be a part of? He is so faithful to bring people 
And we all have seasons where there's less than more. But he's faithful. Go to him first. Don't, don't strategize and get to the end of a recruitment season and then turn around and say, I didn't even really talk to God about this. Mm-hmm. Don't do it. He's not asking you to do it on your own. He, he's like, I'm your partner. I'm your, I'm, not, I'm your partner. I'm your leader. I'm leading you. Go to me first. Like, I have a plan here. I actually care about this even more than you do. Um, he will provide. He will give you grace to endure seasons. And there's people in here who are so, way more seasoned than me. And so you know what I'm talking about. Like, you've been through that. And you're just like, you're right. If I could just look back and remember, that's another thing to do. Is to, if we could, and it's so hard because we're zoomed in all the way into our weekly, monthly schedule, whatever that looks like for you. If you could look back, you go, man, God, you were super faithful to provide people. That's pretty cool. I'm going to trust in you. Not that I'm not going to work really hard because I'm going to, but the, my spirit is going to be reliant on you. And when I do that, it's a joy to do ministry. And when I don't do that, it sucks the life right out of me. And I just don't want to be a part. And every church has different styles, too, of like leadership and expectations. So it's really on you. Maybe you're in a little bit more of a formal setting of a church. Um, and it's really, really, no matter what, but it's on you to steward that relationship, that intimacy of recruitment with Jesus. It's like, hey, I, I'm reliant on you in this season. I don't want to become bitter or frustrated. Um, I would ask these three questions. Do you, do you know, this, is, this would be a really good thing to think about. Do you know what you want your team to look like? Do you know what you want your team to look like? Some people are so much better at this than me. It took me a long time to get to the point where I had an idea of what I wanted. Some people are super organized and like strategize everything out and they're so good. I'm like, oh, I can learn from you. But I had to say no to that question for a really long time. It's like, I don't even know what I'm asking people to be a part of. (laughs) Sorry, that's a bummer. Um, From a structure standpoint, you know, I know know what I want to see in the kids. It's going to be awesome, but... But do you know? It's just a good, good thing to ask yourself as a leader. Uh, two, are you asking enough? Are you asking enough of your, of your team, of your people? Are there people that are just sitting there waiting for you to ask them to do more? And maybe you can ask yourself, if not, then why? Why haven't I asked them? Sometimes there's a really, really good answer to that question. It's because you shouldn't ask that person <laughs> to do more because <laughs> they shouldn't do more, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's just like, I'm not saying every single person's cut out to like be heavily involved, but there's probably certain people on your team. You're probably thinking of people right now. So this is not complicated. This is so simple. I know. I'm sorry, but it's just like, it's just true because you seem to be reminded of it, that there's like someone sitting there, you know, and they could do more. So like, if you walked out of here and like you went home and you asked that person, this would be a win because it's like, I got one more person to do more. That's awesome. But if not, why? Maybe one of the things I would, again, it, it kind of goes to the top is, is do you know what the, you want that to look like? The other thing I would kind of challenge, and it's something I've been thinking about recently, is that um, maybe you haven't asked anybody because you've been protecting yourself from having more people on your team. And maybe you need to ask God to expand your leadership capacity to be able to invite people to the table, to be part of what you're doing. Because I think for many people, it's a lot more safe to say, I'm the kid's pastor and I do it all. But it's so unhealthy. And you just see that when you walk in, something doesn't quite feel right. And you're like, oh man, like they're just the rock star. They're, they just do it all. And you're like, mm, man, I don't know. That, that, doesn't, that seems not as good as it could be. So maybe that's, a, that's something for you is to go, I do it all. But maybe I just need to ask myself the question, why am I doing it all? Because I don't think God wants us to do it alone. Um, what I want you to do is, when I was in school, we, um, I went from a school where we had seven periods or a day, no, nine periods a day. Oh my gosh, I don't know how I did that. Nine classes a day to four classes a day. The best part about going down to four classes a day was that we got to do homework in the class. I rarely took homework home. Just loved that. So I like that, that thought along with a workshop is to go, okay, Let's take the last 20 minutes that we have in here, and I want you guys to, everybody should have a piece of paper. If not, just use your phone or whatever. I want you to spend the next five minutes writing out what your ideal roster positionally would look like. 
So on the back of your paper, write out what your ideal roster would look like. Doesn't need to be perfect. Just get something down as a beginning. Maybe for some of you that you already have that, you could just maybe put something that is stirring in your mind. Maybe it's an addition, a subtraction. Maybe it's an idea that you've been thinking about for a while, but it just hasn't come to fruition. But let's just spend a couple minutes doing that. Just for like an idea, when I did that, this for the first time, it was like me, then I want five small group leaders for each age in elementary. I, I want a person at every station that we're playing games when they come in. I want a person who oversees the gathering time. So just a for instance, you could go, go with something like that. I need a check-in person. <laughs> As you're doing that too, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but I want you to think also about the leadership that's required in some of those and that you shouldn't be the only one leading because that's really what this is all about is going, hey, who could be someone who could lead the check-in system, okay? Who could be someone who could be my small group leader, someone who could be the one who's putting together my curriculum, that type of stuff. So make sure you add that leadership position in there. Couple more minutes here. All right. I know it's like not near enough time for some of you. You're like, ah. Well, I just think it's a good practice, and maybe it's just something you continue. You know, fold this paper up, take it home, or whatever. It's a good practice for us to do this because it really puts down to paper, and what it'll do kind of holds us accountable a little bit too. It's like, ooh, this is really what my vision was. Then you can ask yourself the question, well, what are you doing to fill it? You know. Um, if you have a direction, people, and you're ready to tell someone, this is what I want to do, that's another great thing about having something written down. It's like, it's like having your calendar filled out, right, where you can say no to someone, too. You're like, oh, sorry, I have something scheduled it, too, right? The same thing goes with uh, something that is written down for like a team, because what you can say to somebody is, I have like five people that I'm looking for for this position. You're one of them. And that, that like relaxes people. They're like, Phew. Okay, cool, like you have a plan. Like you have this written down on paper. Like you have a vision for what you're going for. Um, honestly, even if you can hand it to them too, that's pretty neat as well. I have three people that I'm talking to about this and you're one of them and I think it would be great. Then they also go, oh, I'm not the all in all, 
Like, I'm not the only person that they're talking to about being a part of what's going on. Um, the next thing I want to do is we're going to take a couple minutes here, and I want you to, if you're sit with a neighbor, okay, awesome, share with your neighbor. I'm going to give you a minute to think about it. Share with your neighbor something that you've done to develop people who are on your team, okay? And if you have an example, specifically think about what we talked about. Someone who's sitting there has been faithful, but they could do more, and you see that in them. How have you asked them? What have you done to develop them? So think about it for a second, and then we'll chat about it.
<laughs> All right, 30 seconds. Everybody, let's encourage each other with some of the ways that you have done, or maybe an example of how you have developed. Hey, couchy people. Josiah, sorry, we're just having so much fun. <laughs> Love it. What are some of, just go ahead and we'll share a few here, some of the examples you have of developing someone that was in your system that you called to do more? Anybody? Ideas? Yeah, here we go. Uh, I was thought that you're not really, so I'm a, <laughs> a discipleship and outreach pastor. Yeah. So not necessarily in the same realm as the children's ministry, sure. but I kind of oversee um, that field. Um, but I, I've encouraged, um, so each of our, our pastors in our ministry to look at how they distribute their kind of workload mm -hmm. and, and all of those same things so they're not getting you know, that burnt out, yeah. and, you know, um, but just encourage them to find the people in their ministry that are specifically skilled mm. in, you know, set areas, mm -hmm. be it recruiting, be it, you know, yeah. administrative work or pastoral, you know, just loving on people or, yep. um, and figuring out how they can equip those people even more so, and then finding and, and working with our, our pastors to, further that even more and say, okay, now you've trained somebody that can do recruiting. Yeah. How do they train the next mm. person? How do they, you know, and that's yep. that kind of spirit of discipleship in, you know, that skill yep. set that really has developed ministries to kind of flourish. Yeah, that's good. Kind of, so. Yep. That's awesome. Yep. Um, for me personally, I think that most people, most anybody could be taught a skill if they have humility and willingness to learn and willingness to serve. So I look for people with that kind of personality or that heart. Huh. Okay, and, like that. And um, for me, like I wanted a nursery director just because I was like, I, I don't know, I can't be the only person. And so <laughs> I found a, a girl, a woman who had those qualities and just asked her. Yeah. I had no idea what, how she would respond or if she'd be interested, but mm -hmm. she said yes. and. Just meeting with her regularly, we meet every other week, and just um, growing together and showing care for her as a person and not just as a commodity or somebody who has some there you opportunity, go. I think, has been the most valuable go. part of developing. Yep. I think that you mentioned that, you know, when somebody leaves, you're like, oh, man, like, you're leaving. I think the, the feeling that's almost worse than that to me is when they leave, I feel like I failed them. Yeah. Like, I failed them. Mm. Right. I failed to Dude, that's really, good. Uh, acknowledge them and thank them. <laughs> right. Which isn't always true. Yeah. I mean. Um, yeah, the question to me is like, <laughs> did, is there something I could have done? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's good. Shelly. It's kind of funny. So there's this guy that forever, and like, he needs to be in children's ministry. He needs to be on my kids' church team. Yeah. Because eventually I have this whole vision of him being on stage. That's this type of guy. He has a son in our ministry, and our ministry at 1030 was booming. We had so many kids in kids' church, and we just, you know, needed to add more leaders. And so I've been praying about it. I'm like, well, how do I? They just had a, a baby this year, and how, how do I go about this? He's a busy guy, right? So he gets on Facebook and he makes some bodily function joke, <laughs> and he's like, oh, because like you know, I'm juvenile, blah blah blah. So people like bashing him on Facebook, like, ah, oh, that was like inappropriate. And I was like, dude, this is a sign from God. <laughs> <laughs> no joke, the next Sunday he just comes and sits on the back and he goes, you're right, I'm here. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> I talked to him on my team and he's like starting to leave and it was just, it was just a 
joke, but I was like, dude, that's our humor, so you just yep. need to like come out of it. Because I've been thinking about it, but that comment just pushed me over the edge. I love it. So I was like, all right. <laughs> I love it. Nick? That, uh, you talked about, and you said, you said it pretty quickly, all this, um, what you want it to look like, and you said structure, but I think that's a sign of like what you want the culture mm, that's of good. your team there you go. like as well. I identify that's a fun-loving spirit. There you go. Mm -hmm. I, love that. I don't know anything about you. Yeah. If you pass the background check, we're good. Or sure. Or that, that, that person is like really compassionate. Yeah. That's a culture I want to have on my team. So yes. it's not only just like what's the structure look sure. like, but what is the what is the feeling and the attitude of what we want. To I love do. that. Like, that is true. Yep. That's one reason you need to get to know them. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we learned at first. We got now a new early childhood director and a new elementary because they came in and worked. Yeah. Improved themselves. That's serious. Yeah. And you just you know them and you care for them while they're there and you yeah that's good. Yeah. And then you you first. So I'm fairly new to the position. Mm -hmm. When I came into some history, it was we, it was just a very broken ministry and so. Um, I had like nine people, and so we have just we grew so fast that I'm like, you sit back and you go, oh my gosh, God, you're amazing. So we um, broke it up into department meetings. So we meet with our nursery, meet with our elementary team, and our preschool team. Um, but I'm very strategic and I'm very organized. Like it has to fit the policy. It has to fit, you know. Obviously, if you have your control mm. chaos days. But I was finding that my leaders weren't stepping up. I'm like, God, what is mm. going on? Like I'm seeing this in people, and so I realized like. One Wednesday night, we have amazing small group leaders on Wednesday night, and so at our pre-service meeting, I just looked at them and I said, okay, you're doing this, you're doing this, and this is what it's going to look like, and it's going to flow, and they were like, okay, and they just went with it, and it just, from that point on, it was just, it just happened, mm -hmm. but they were like, they were asked, they were sitting in the meetings, but it was just like that call, to like, okay, tonight, you're stopping that. Yeah. So I had to give that, like, that final level push to Made it clear okay. to them. And it just took so much pressure off of me. Yeah. To where because it's not about me. Right. It's about us as a team. Yeah. Know? So it was just that final push. You clarified expectations, too. Absolutely. Sometimes I don't think we do that. We just expect people because we think that people are going to do what we think they should do. Absolutely. And they're going, I'm willing, but I don't know what I'm expected to do. So, right. yeah, that's yeah. good. Were you raising? Oh, let's go. Yeah, you, Jordan first and then you, Rylan. You last, Rylan. One thing that I've had a need was I had a, I have a, an awesome leader and I've asked her to teach for me one Sunday, um, once a month. Mm -hmm. And uh, she doesn't teach the way I would teach. And so that's always like a, uh, I don't want to, <laughs> like that's not how I would do it. But I've had to, to learn to, to give, give up that. Mm -hmm. like, it's not about how I would do it. It's about encouraging or releasing her as a leader. And that's also freed me up to be in the lobby to, to talk to parents, to talk mm. to potential volunteers yeah. and everything once a month. So you're talking about like, a re like releasing a little bit of uh, it instead of doing this. Yeah. yeah. That's funny. I've got a baby ministry, so. <laughs> Dude, isn't that true though? And how many, especially I say what I'm not like, but I know that um, type A, and there's a lot of type A people in kids ministry too, on one hand and then the exact opposite. So it's so funny. Like we're like in working extremes, it seems. But um, like a type A person, like they're like, I wish people wanted to do this with me. And then you're like, you're killing me because you're like holding on to this like this. <laughs> you're like killing me right now. I can't even do anything. Do something. No, you don't get this. Dude, that's really, really good. Yeah, that's awesome. Yep. I have a question about that, of how, maybe how you handle that. Because I have one teacher that relieves me for the elementary age. And um, she definitely has a different, she has a great heart and mm -hmm. definitely a different style. So for example, um, has let me know that all of the children need to know the Ten Commandments by heart <laughs> and only two of them do. Oh yeah. And so it's her, and I'm mm. like, great, that's your mission when it's your Sunday, have at it. But then also she's done things like brought in um, a couple who have been in ministry forever to the kids because she also thinks the children need to learn all of the very old choruses. So yeah. there is the balance between yeah. letting letting someone be different than yeah. you, which I'm all, I, I feel like I'm sure. for, unless it's this, I guess. Yeah, I guess you have to ask a... <laughs> I feel like I'm not controlling unless I'm being controlling. Yeah. yeah, no, 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 I hear you. There's a cultural, you you got to fight for your culture. Sure. 
Absolutely, you establish this is what we do, and I think part part of what does establish our culture is what we're I mean, it's what we're teaching our kids is a huge huge part of that. What's an emphasis? We only have a precious short amount of time yeah. with them, so I think that's you got to guard that. I don't think that's. I'm not hearing you say the same thing as that necessarily. Oh, no, I, we're almost like talking about content rather than style yeah, is what I heard I, from you. Yeah. Would write up a this is the lesson that we're teaching. Right. You teach it how you want. Like we do. I do uh, the videos. She does not like the videos. She loves to get up and do that. Uh, what she does. Um, but I say here. Here are the guidelines of what we're doing. You can take it, make it your own. There you go. But this is what we're doing. And I feel like I have done that. Right. Yeah. And she said, within those guidelines, we also. Yeah. That's the that. bad part. Yeah. So that's what I think. We don't problem. also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's a great question, though. Yeah, Rylan. Yeah, uh, I was just back to like how do you get people to stick around and do a little bit more for you? That, yeah. Um, because this was done for me, I just naturally, like, I was like, dude, this was such a big help for me getting, getting started that I want to do it for people. The leader that I was raised under gave me the opportunity to do what I was good at. Mm. Sure. Right. Yep. So, um, Which least. My, yeah, I know the rest. Of it. It's not the point. Sorry. Uh, in, in my, uh, in my uh, uh, opinion, mm -hmm. uh, with young leaders especially, it's a bit attractive to the crowd. Mm -hmm. That's not demeaning at all. Hey, Ryland, can I please do this? At you do you, boo boo. <laughs> Go back, do the games. Uh, but, but I mean, back to uh, it, it, it can come down so finally. Uh, I, got, I got smaller leaders on a Sunday um, that are only there one Sunday of the month, right? But I know that those people love crafts. I hate putting together crafts. Yeah. But I'll put together a craft worksheet because I know that when they're leading small group, small group's going to be so much more fun for those kids mm -hmm. because they get to do what that leader loves doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so taking your leaders, understanding what they love doing, what they're good at, and they, they like doing, and empowering them to do that, and then you can get them to do more. Right? Mm -hmm. If that person loves crafts, hey, do you some crafts? Sure. Stuff, like, yeah. Stink at it, but you're really good at it. So I got it. That's good. All right, I want to be honoring of your time, and it is now time to go. We're already four past. So, um, like I said, I think for any workshop, just great to, if you can take one thing. Maybe for you, is I wrote down a leader that I'm going to talk to you later. Then boom, shakalaka. Something happened here. Let me pray over you, and then we'll go. Jesus, thank you that you brought someone to mind. And we're going to do our part now to follow up. We're not going to be leaders who just ask questions and, and have paralysis by analysis, but we're going to move forward into what you've asked us to do, and it requires other people. So um, we're going to ask more. We're going, to, um, we're, we're going to ask you to fill us up with your spirit so that we can be great leaders. Um, and I pray that over every person in this room because kids' lives are dependent on it. Kids' eternity forever and ever. They could be with you forever, and we want more people, more people doing your kingdom work to show them your love. That's what this is all about, to teach them about you and what it looks like to love you and live for you. Jesus, we love you. Just pray that um, you give us energy for this second session and this night that we have or coming up today because um, we want to hear from you. We want to have open ears, hearts, and uh, feet that go do what you ask us to do. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. 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 Thanks, guys.